Hey everybody. Uh, I'm just going to call this video a little informal chat video. I went over to the big city today, the next town over actually, we always joke about it being the big city. Uh, I visited my water treatment people while I was over there and I took a sample of my water. The main thing I wanted to find out while I was there, I wanted him to test uh, the total dissolved solids. I wanted him to use his uh, TDS meter and give me a number because I was afraid the number I've been coming up with with my TDS meter was just wrong. Um, or whether it was wrong or not, I just had no way to, to con there was no control. I just had no way to verify that I was getting the correct numbers. So on that note, I was quite happy to see that the TDS meter he used was the same brand and almost the same exact model that I have. A uh, very inexpensive unit I bought for about $22, I think. Uh, and then again, his numbers came out very similar to mine. I don't, I forgot to take the stupid thing with me when I went over there. Like I said, it was kind of a spur of the moment. I just grabbed a bag of water and I ran out the door. Um, so I checked it when I got home and it was within 10 parts per million of the number he came up with. Now, I'm still not really going to go into details about the number I've got just yet because I still want to find out a little more information about my water. Uh, before I do it, I'm going to try to give you a look at my striated Bodie or my zebra loaches. If you pay attention to the bottom of this tank, they're really shy. They always dart back in whenever I try to video them. But when I sit here quietly, they're just out and about all the time. They're really super playful fish. So if you just keep an eye on the bottom of the tank, you should see my zebra loaches darting around while I chat here. Um, we also had a talk about water hardness, total dissolved solids, what my system does, so on and so forth. And I think I have come to realize why we are crossing signals so often and why I'm getting these confusing results. We are looking at numbers from two different industries. He's looking at it from a water treatment uh, industry measurement scale, and I'm looking at it from an aquarist's hobby point of view scale. So he talks about water hardness in terms of grains per gallon. And I talk about water hardness in terms of degrees of general hardness. Now this does not translate one for one. One degree of hardness is not the same as one grain per gallon. So he was assuming that we were using different terminology but coming up with the same things and he was telling me that one degree I'm sorry one grain per gallon is the equivalent of 17.1 parts per million now when we're talking about water hardness you can say parts per million and that does not mean the same as TDS parts per million because TDS means it could be anything dissolved, it could be sugar dissolved in your water. That still counts as your total dissolved solids. If you're talking about grains per gallon at 17.1 parts per million, that is 17.1 parts per million of either calcium or magnesium or a combination of the both. That is what makes hardness or water hardness in the water industry. That is not exactly the same as degrees of general hardness that we in the aquarium industry talk about. Very, very similar, but not quite the same. And I also found out that the numbers do not line up correctly. One degree of general hardness is equal to 17.848 parts per million. So it's not the 17.1 parts per million that one grain per gallon um, equals. So what does all this mean? It means that I've got something to work with now. I was going to use the numbers and the math that he gave me and I still can to some degree because the, the real number I'm looking for is not so much the aquarium industry number. I just want to find out how many parts per million of sodium ions I have in my water because I know I have them in there. It's, it's a given. I've, I put them in there. I know they're there. And yes, I still have not gotten around to cleaning this tank. That's kind of on my list today, but we'll see how that goes. Obviously, I don't really stick to any kind of hard and fast uh, schedule and I don't always uh, do the things I claim I'm going to do later this afternoon. Um, that's why you're never going to find like an every Friday type, F, you know, video release from me. I It's hit or miss. That's why I always tell people to subscribe. I just do them when I feel like doing them. Uh, sometimes you get a lot rapid fire. Sometimes it's several days between them. Um, anyway, 
with the math that I've got, I can start figuring it, and this is where it's going to start getting confusing, because remember, TDS is total dissolved solids. It could be anything dissolved in my water. I could have arsenic dissolved in my water that does not count for hardness. So what I need to do is I need to take my groundwater, my source water, and I need to check for the hardness. And no, I still haven't done anything with that aluminum foil either. That really is just there to keep the glare off of my face when I'm filming. If you take it away, you see how much light it puts on everything right in front of the tank. Uh, so that's the only reason I have that there. I need to do something with this uh, hood. I'm actually thinking I want to take that and just kind of angle it slightly that way so it shines down and into the tank and does not give me so much glare when I'm trying to film. So if I take my groundwater that's coming straight out of the ground and I check for hardness and let's say I've got five degrees general hardness on my aquarium test kit. That will give me a number that I can work with so I can start determining how many parts per million of calcium and magnesium I have. So let's just, I'm gonna just use round numbers to make it easy. Let's say I find that I have 300, uh, the, the amount of hardness that would equate to 300 parts per million of calcium and magnesium. Well, if my groundwater's got 500 parts per million TDS, that's 200 parts per million of something in my water that I don't know what it is. All I can account for is what makes water hard, which is calcium and magnesium. I don't have a science lab in my basement. I can't test my water for everything that might be in it. So what I can test for, I will, and that will give me a number to start with, and we can start going from there. And once I get the number of parts per million of calcium and magnesium, in my source water, I can then check my parts per million on my tap water at the other end of my system and I can compare those two numbers and there's a bunch of complicated math I can do, but the end result is it will tell me how many of those parts per million are actually sodium ions and then whatever else is left over is just going to be something that's left over. Um, I know that I've got a fair amount of nitrates in my groundwater, so those do count as parts per million of total dissolved solids. I know they're pulled out of my water, so that actually puts sodium ions back in. Um, I've always gotten confusing numbers about the amount of exchange rate with sodium ions. It is not a one-to-one -one exchange, nor is it a two-to-one exchange. It's somewhere in the middle, and you've got to do a bunch of weird, complicated math and come up with how many grains per quart, and then you got to multiply that by four, and then that gives you your number of how many sodium ions you added back into your water. So again, all this video is going to do is sort of let you know I've got some stuff to work with. I can now begin the process of testing my water and figuring out what I've got to start with. Uh, once I've figured out what I've got to start with, uh, we will then be able to start doing some math. And I'm, honestly, I'm probably just going to start taking him uh, my numbers and say, look, this is my source water. This is what we've got. What does this mean? And I'm going to let him do the math because I do not do math. Um, I don't do math when I got a calculator in my hand, it comes out wrong. Uh, the formulas get all jumbled up in my head, I'm just terrible at it. So knowing that, you know, knowing some of your weaknesses is actually a strength in itself. So knowing that I'm terrible at math, I'm not going to rely on my math to figure out what exactly is going on in my water. Uh, I'm going to rely on somebody else's math. Um, you know what, I'm going to actually show you this while I'm standing here because this just caught my attention now, it's bugging me. I've been working on killing this bit of cyanobacteria that is on that wood sticking out above the water. So watch what happens when I spray a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on it. Look at all that foam. There you go, there's a better look. That is just killing that away. And do not try this at home, ladies and gentlemen. I know what I'm doing with hydrogen peroxide. The amount I'm putting in this tank is nowhere near um, dangerous concentrations. Those two little squirts I just gave is all I'm going to do. Um, Again, don't, just because you saw me do that, please do not do that. I've killed many fish uh, learning how to use hydrogen peroxide properly in a fish tank. Um, but I'm just working on trying to kill that. So I just thought I'd show you that little tidbit while I was doing this. Next, we're going to move on and look at my 125. Because I actually do want to talk about this tank too a little bit. I told you this is going to be sort of a general conversation about things and nothing uh, too topic specific. But my 125 here now is getting into being where it's going to need its first real water change. And I don't mean the water changes like I was doing before that were panic water changes and, and you know, keeping the 
uh, nitrite levels down. This is going to need its first water change because the waters are starting to get tannin stained, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So what I'm noticing here, can you see all the stuff on the glass? I don't know what that is, but I know that every time I have started a new tank, I get that stuff growing on there. Hang on a second, I'm going to have to cough here. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry about that. <clears throat> Do not know what that stuff on the glass is, but it always develops on new tanks. And it's sort of this wispy, wavy stuff that flows in the current. I don't know if it's some kind of bacteria, I don't know if it's some kind of algae. Um, I do know that it is part of the process of this tank just working itself in and finding its balance. Just because I have reached the point where it's no longer um, dangerous, I'm not getting any buildup of the nitrites or the ammonia anymore, doesn't mean the tank's found its balance. I mean, it's still got a long way to go between all of the variety of bacteria and microflora and fauna that's living in this tank. The, the nitrifying bacteria in your tank is far from the only additional life forms you have in your tank and they all have to sort out who's going to live where and what amounts of food and what amounts of waste are being produced and so on and so forth so it still does take a little while for a tank to find its balance and this tank is still in the process of doing that so i want to let it ride a little bit longer before i do the first water change because the more you mess with the water the longer it takes for it to find its balance because you shift those parameters uh, pretty dramatically every time you do a water change uh, so we're going to let it ride a little bit longer but I did want to point out just in case I do a spur of the moment water change at some point and I don't video which is unlikely um, but you never know I did want to get this on um, film and, and show you uh, for the new aquarist if you've just started your first tank and you're starting to wonder what that stuff on your glass is I don't know I can't tell you exactly what it is but I can tell you not to panic or don't worry about it it's just part of a tank growing in uh, someone asked me the other day, they were, they just put some woodwork in their tank and then the wood started growing that white fuzzy stuff all over it and they were panicking because they didn't know what it was. I don't either. I know it's some kind of fungus or bacteria or something that very, very frequently grows on new wood when you put it into a tank. Uh, it just takes time for that stuff to work itself out. It will go away eventually. A lot of fish eat it. The snails will eat it. Um, and then your wood will look nice and beautiful again in due time. But you do usually have to go through that strange period where you're growing this sort of white stuff. It looks kind of fuzzy. It looks kind of slimy at the same time. Um, don't sweat it. Don't freak out and panic if you see that. That is very normal and natural to see on uh, new wood when you put it in your tank. So there's your big mishmash of information that didn't really amount to a whole lot of anything other than me just kind of telling you what's going on with things in the works. I'm definitely going to be spending some time this afternoon again over on my washing machine with my little test kits out and I'm going to be testing my groundwater today and I'm going to start finding out what I'm starting with and once we start from there uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some more progress. The only thing I really want to find out is how many damn sodium ions I have in my water. Um, once I know that I will feel much more comfortable. I'll feel like I can you know start addressing certain uh, topics much more specifically as far as what types of fish uh, can deal with osmo regulating with those types of sodium ions in the water and so on and so forth so it will step up to the next level of complicated um, once we get some groundwork established but you know without knowing what I'm starting with I can't really talk about where we're going and I don't want to start throwing information out there uh, based on speculation. So give me some time and maybe even a couple of weeks to start sorting this stuff out. Uh, believe me, I've been going around and around on my water. Um, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody in my life that talks about their damn water as much as I do. <laughs> so give me some time. I will be working on that. I will be keeping you updated as I find new information uh, and figure out what's going on with that. And uh, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching this one. I hope that was... Uh, something to get you to look forward to what's coming up here soon. If you're not already subscribed, please do so you don't want to miss any of that stuff I got coming up. And uh, again, I thank you for watching this one. I'll see you on the next one.